Good afternoon, my name is Jace Whitaker, and I'm here to explain the difference between marketing to the LGBT community and rainbow washing, a form of substanceless pandering. Before we get started, you may want to know whether the LGBT community is a community your organization needs to reach out to. According to a Gallup survey from 2017, 4.5% of American adults identify as gay, white, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. That number doubles to 8.2% among Americans born after 1980. That's Millennials and Gen Z. By the way, that's a conservative estimate. The Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, or GLAD, conducted its own survey that same year that found that one out of every five Millennials identifies as LGBTQ. Granted, that GLAD poll worded its questions in a more inclusive manner, which may have affected the results. Still, the percentage of Americans who identify as LGBT is going up over the years, especially among young people. But now, what is LGBT marketing, and how do organizations go about it? LGBT marketing is what happens when organizations enact strategic advertising or PR campaigns designed to appeal to the LGBT community and its supporters. A common strategy is to have a seasonal Pride Month campaign during June. The campaign may involve selling Pride-themed merchandise, changing its branding to rainbow colors, statements of support for the LGBT community, or fundraising for LGBT organizations and causes. Of course, you may be thinking, isn't that kind of shallow? Is it really enough to just put a rainbow filter on your organization's Twitter icon for a month and call your organization LGBT positive? In today's socially conscious atmosphere, no. An LGBT marketing campaign made by an organization that doesn't do tangible work for the LGBT community might be decried as rainbow washing. So at what point does LGBT marketing become rainbow washing? Well, it happens when an organization talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk when it comes to LGBT rights. If a brand sells rainbow-themed merchandise but doesn't give any of that money back to LGBT organizations or causes, that's rainbow washing. If a brand claims to be LGBT positive but donates to anti-LGBT politicians, that's rainbow washing. If a brand claims to support equal rights but doesn't have a policy that protects prospective LGBT employees from employment discrimination, that's rainbow washing. In other words, it's a lack of perceived authenticity due to, due to actions taken by the organization. In contrast, a brand that does LGBT marketing well is perceived as expressing an authentic sentiment. Steps an organization can take to be perceived as authentic include donating, donating a portion of sales to LGBT causes and organizations, fostering an LGBT inclusive work environment, maintaining a consistently positive stance on LGBT rights instead of flip-flopping, working with LGBT positive organizations, and ensuring all other advertising campaigns are LGBT inclusive. If you want an example of a brand that does authentic LGBT marketing well, look at Ben & Jerry's. The ice cream manufacturer has supported the LGBT community for decades. In fact, same-sex partners of Ben & Jerry's employees have been able to claim health insurance benefits through their partner's workplace since 1989, which is huge for that era, just coming out of the AIDS crisis. Um, the brand has been openly donating to LGBT organizations since 1996. Thus, Ben and Jerry's came off came off as authentic when it came out in support of same-sex marriage in 2009, making it one of the first major brands to do so at a time when only a handful of states had legalized same-sex marriage. So, still a pretty controversial issue at that time, and they were one of the pioneers on that marketing end. Um, you want your organization to avoid the appearance of pink washing its record on LGBT rights. The most important thing to do is to donate to LGBT causes. Don't be like the 40% of brands with Pride Month marketing campaigns who donated no money to LGBT causes in 2019. With so many brands declaring their support for LGBT Pride, socially conscious consumers are now at liberty to pick the brand that's most committed to LGBT rights instead of one that's merely okay. Uh, the other important thing to keep in mind is to pick a stance on LGBT rights and stick with it. Don't revise or rescind your LGBT marketing campaign when your organization receives backlash. If you believe your organization can't safely take a hardline stance in favor of LGBT rights, then don't even dabble in LGBT marketing. Consumers don't take kindly to flip-flopping. Thank you for listening. That's all I have to share. I hope what I had to say will help everyone in their public relations careers. Have a good afternoon. Stay home and stay safe.